Hello, my name is Len Nassman. I'm here today to provide an introduction to LibreOffice version 6.2. There are a number of new features in this release of LibreOffice that are worth taking a look at. In this video, I'll demonstrate some of the new user interface options found in version 6.2. You'll also get a bit of a hint at what I've covered in my introduction to word processing with LibreOffice Writer. This book is available online as a PDF file, and there are also videos that go along with this. Well, let's get into the user interface. When you open up LibreOffice, the welcome screen will provide you with thumbnails of recently used documents. You can simply select from this collection of documents and continue with work that you've been doing, or you can start a brand new document in this demonstration, we'll start a new LibreOffice Writer document. To see the new user interface options, go to the menu bar and select View. By the way, it may be that the menu bar is not on your display. If that's the case, go to this tool in the upper left corner of the display, and when you hover on it, it will show the term menu bar, and select that. Select means to left click. That will open up the menu bar and then from the menu bar we can select view, user interface, and we can review the different interface options that are available. In this demonstration we're going to use the tabbed interface option. So we'll select that. And once we've selected view, user interface tabbed, we will see a series of tabs across the screen right below the menu bar. Let's take a look at the different tabs that are available. It starts by default with the Home tab and all the tools available in the Home tab are displayed in a wide horizontal area right below the tab bar. If we select the File tab we get a new set of tools. Tools like File Save As, or File Save, or Create a PDF File, or Print Various Options. To the right of the Home tab is the Insert tab. Insert includes inserting images, or inserting things from the gallery, or inserting media, or hyperlinks, and more. The Layout tab will give you all kinds of page control options. The Reference tab gives you more tools to use. The Review tab may be of interest because that's where you can find the spell checking tool and even a thesaurus if you need that. There is a View tab that, that allows you to change what is being viewed one of the things that I always use is the formatting marks tool. More about that later. And then there's a tools tab, which gives you an additional collection of tools. Let's go back to the home tab and we need to operate on something. So I'm going to add a bunch of dumb text to this document. Now I've gone off to the internet and I've copied some text and I've pasted it into this new document. The, the text that I found on the internet is known as lorem ipsum. Lorem ipsum. For many, many years, typesetters have used this strange collection that looks almost like Latin, but it's in some non-language. They've used this to fill up space so they could check the formatting of things. And so I decided I would use that in my example here. There are a number of different lorem ipsum generators that are available on the internet. Now that we have some text on the display, let's take a look at some of the options in the Home tab. Some of the things on the Home tab are similar to earlier versions of LibreOffice and some are similar to other word processing programs. For example, there's a font style and there's a font size and you can use bold or italic or underlined. 
just to see what happens. I'm going to click and drag on some words and then I'll select bold and you'll notice that those words that were selected are now bold. By the way, this is a toggle. I click once, it's toggled on. I click again and the bold function is toggled off. The same with italic, on or off, underline, on or off, and so on. One of the new things in this user interface that's now right here handy under the Home tab is this tool. And by the way, if I hover on these tools, a tooltip will pop up and tell me what they're for. This tool will increase the font size of whatever text is selected. So I can increase the font size, or right next to that, I can decrease the font size. Or I can click that little arrow right beside the font size indicator, and I can click a new value for that. Any value I like, all the way up to, well, it goes all the way up to 96. Well, we don't want 96, so let's set it back to 12. When we have text on the display, and when we have some text selected, we can use these tools on the Home tab to adjust font characteristics. And we can even highlight or we can change the font cover color. We also have available the alignments, left alignment, center, right alignment, justified. We also have the bullets. We can toggle bulleting on and off or numbered lists on or off or outline style list on or off. We can also increase the indent, we can decrease the indent. And here again is the formatting marks toggle. Formatting marks are very useful to find out how the page has been formatting. There are a lot of characters in word processing that do not appear when they're printed. And so, for example, a paragraph symbol let me go to this symbol, which is a paragraph symbol, select that point, and press the Enter key. And if I do it a couple of times, you'll see that I've entered two paragraphs that have no words or spaces. If this was turned off, I would have no idea how that formatting was created. So I like to keep the Toggle Formatting Marks option toggled on. I'm going to jump ahead here and tell you a shortcut that some of your best friends might not tell you, and that is how to undo things. I'm going to hold the control key down and press the letter Z. Notice what happened here. Control Z. Continuing along on the Home tab, we have some other options. We have heading styles. We have update. We can update styles. We can edit styles. We can insert tables from here and we can insert images from here. We can also zoom in and out, and we can toggle the print view on or off. Let me back up here on the Home tab to this area, which is Set Paragraph Styles. Now, paragraph styles and later page styles give you phenomenal power in doing word processing. Let me show you how this works. Right now it says default style. That's what happens if I don't do anything else. I want to select all of the paragraphs in this document. I'll, do a sh I'll use a shortcut. I'll click anywhere in any paragraph in the document, and I'll hold the control key down, and I'll press the letter A. So I've now selected everything, all of the text in the document. If I slide down here, you'll see everything is highlighted in light blue, which means it's selected. Now I'm going to change the paragraph style of all selected paragraphs from the default style to a text body style. Now watch carefully what happens. And now let me go back to the top of the display, top of the document, and you notice now that at the end of every paragraph there is a space before the next paragraph. The default style didn't have these spaces. There is also found in the text body paragraph style a different amount of spacing between lines. Now in the old typewriter days you tried to control all this or you had to control all this by hitting the enter key to add blank lines between paragraphs. You never do that with word processing. If you want to have 
space between paragraphs. You control it by the paragraph style and not just by entering extra carriage returns, what we used to call carriage returns in the old-fashioned typewriter days. So you should see now when we use the Home tab using the tabbed interface, we have immediate access to a large variety of character controls and spacing control or alignment controls and paragraph controls all here on this wide toolbar. You might have been noticing over here on the right side there's a sidebar. At least it is on my display. If you don't see this sidebar your display might look like this and that's because the sidebar is toggled off. There's a quick key to toggle it on. There's also a way to say view sidebar and you if you look close here as you look at view sidebar you notice there's a shortcut indication control plus F5 will do the same thing as selecting view sidebar from the menu. When the sidebar is open there are a number of different options for the sidebar. Right now the sidebar property settings option is selected. There's a whole list of these. We can change the contents of the sidebar, but let's concentrate on the properties sidebar options. Well, you'll soon notice that a lot of the controls that were in the Home tab are also duplicated over here on the sidebar. The paragraph style is duplicated. The character or font style is duplicated. Bold, italic, color, highlight, all of these things increase decrease the fonts, all of these are repeated on the sidebar. So this new interface gives us multiple ways to do the same thing and depending on how we're working in the document by being aware of these we can work much faster. Let's do a quick review of some of the options here. Well let me add a, yet another option, a secret trick. I'm going to hold the control key down and I'm going to press the home key on my keyboard and the control home option will jump the text cursor right to the beginning of the document. Control home jump to the beginning the home part of the document. Then I'm going to press the enter key and add a new paragraph. I'll put the cursor in the new paragraph and then from the paragraph style choices. I'm going to select the title style and then I'll type some words and you notice that by selecting the title style it automatically changed the font name and the font size. At the end of that title paragraph and I press the enter key it goes back to the text body style that was being used before. If I choose the subtitle style and type a subtitle and once again the font name and size is now that selected by the subtitle paragraph style. Oh dear, maybe I should have capitalized this S in this word a subtitle. Let me highlight that word and let me go over to format text and look at all these text formatting things. One of the things is I can say capitalize every word. I don't have to retype anything here. I don't have to delete the S and go back and put in an uppercase S. If I wanted to I could highlight this whole line of text, this whole paragraph and say format text uppercase and make it all uppercase. Formatting text opens up a whole world of text formatting options and one of the rules of thumb that we follow is we should never type anything twice. If it's typed once and you don't like its appearance you have lots of tools that you can use in whether changing the paragraphs or changing the fonts or changing the size you don't have to retype. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun and, and insert an image into this document. 
I'm going to put the uh, cursor somewhere in the center paragraph, who knows where, but up here on the tab toolbar, I'll find insert image. And when I do that, it'll pop open the insert image dialog box. Now here, this is like File Explorer. I can go and find any of my hard drives or any folder inside a folder, inside a folder in a hard drive. And uh, when I'm there, I can either view the images as large icons or as small icons or as details. So I can select them by name. I can select them by date. I'm going to stick with the large icon display option. And then I'm going to select this particular image and I'm going to open it. And oops, there it is, there it is. But that's a, a, an image that's too big for the space. But here's the important point. The important point is as soon as I insert an image and as long as that image remains selected, notice what's happened to my tabs. It switched from the home tab to the image tab. And now I have a whole group of image tab tools that I can use. There's another thing that happened. It also changed the sidebar to include some image tools. One of them is position and size. I'm going to make sure that my keep ratio option is toggled on, and then I'm going to change the width of that image to 1.5. And there it is. However, it's right in the middle of all these text. What I can do is I can use these tools to left justify the image, to center it, to right justify it, and there's more. If you look closely when this image is selected, there's this kind of gray ghosty anchor. That's an anchor point. And if I drag the image to a new paragraph, It'll change that anchor point to the new paragraph. So I can click when, as long as the image is selected. I, I breezed by that a little fast. Watch the cursor. When I'm in the text area of this document, I see a text cursor. When I get on top of an image and select the image, you notice that I have a four-way arrow. Now I can click and drag that image to a new place, as long as I have that four-way. Also, these grab bars allow me to select and resize the image just by clicking on the grab bars. Same as if I would have gone over here and typed a new size in the sidebar. So there's all kinds of power uh, in this new interface. The interface is a function, whoops, I clicked back into the text body, and the interface automatically jumped back to the home tab. I click on a graphic image and it jumps to the image tab and changes the, the sidebar to image position and size properties. Wow, all of this stuff is happening faster than you can blink, but it allows you to work much faster when you're creating documents. Before I end this demonstration, let me review just one other area of the user interface. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of the display where we have something called the status bar. And over on the far right side of the status bar is a zoom tool. Now watch what happens. I'm going to drag along that little line and notice that I can zoom in and out on the display. Now, I'm not changing font size. I'm only changing the window onto my document. On the left side of this drag bar is a minus sign. Every time I click that, it will zoom out. On the right side, there's a plus sign. Every time I click on that, it will zoom in. On the far right, I can click and I actually get a zoom and view layout window. And there, I can choose the magnification size, variable or 100%, or I can say, fit the width of the document onto my display and say OK. So there's a lot of ways to adjust the display down here. This area here allows me to display the document in different ways. Right now, the single page view is displayed. I also have a multiple page view and I also have a book view. If I select the book view 
and then I zoom out quite a bit, you'll see that in the book, this, this document you see has four pages right now. You see in the book view, it shows a right page, and then it shows the left and right facing pages, and then it shows a left page. If I would change to the multiple page view, it shows as many pages as will fit in my current zoom size. So here we have different ways to display the document. As we travel across the sidebar, we come across this tool. When we hover on it, it says, this document has been modified. This document has been modified. Click here to save the document. I click, and now the document opens up the Save As dialog box and gives me a chance to choose where I would like to put this document. So I'll open up my practice folder and I'll call this demo X. Whoops, demo X. And now when I enter that name, the title bar will actually show the name of the document what I'm working on. I should have pointed out before I saved this, it was called untitled, but now it's got a real name. Also, on the status bar, it tells me what language I'm working in. It tells me the default page styles. We haven't gotten to page styles. We will in some lesson if you follow along in my, in my tutorial book. It also tells me how many words are in the document, how many characters are in the document, and that we're working on page one of four. There's another bar right above here that has all kinds of drawing tools. That may not be on your display. What I've done sometime earlier is I've gone to View, Toolbars, and I've turned on the drawing tools. The drawing tools provide you with a lot of other options of things that you can add to your documents. Maybe I want to add an arrow. I'll just draw that out. Whoops, covering up the document. So I'll use the uh, page wrap. Maybe I'll use the uh, wrap left tool, and there's my graphic, my drawing object added to the document. So there's all kinds of power in this user interface. You have to develop shotgun vision rather than rifle vision. Rather than focusing on one little part, you have to open your eyes and you have to see the whole user interface here. And if you do, you'll be able to take advantage of the great power of the LibreOffice 6.2 user interface. And now it's time for a brief commercial message. Well, it's not truly commercial. I have created Lens Introduction to Word Processing with LibreOffice Writer. And this is a collection of a number of different lessons, tutorial lessons, that are available in PDF format. The format that I've used for years in developing tutorial materials is to provide information about things like the user interface, but provide detailed steps using a project-oriented approach to learning. It's a learn-by-doing approach. It's not a reference manual. It's not a demonstration, but it is a tutorial that leads you through a set of processes that will take you from being a beginner to being a power user of LibreOffice Writer.